Hey, welcome back. Guess what, everybody? Joe Dante. Yeah! Yeah! Unbelievable! Started out with Roger Corman, wound up becoming the best director in Hollywood on your own. A legend! Wow. A legend in your own time. A legend in my own mind. In my own mind. <laughs> so you've got something new going on, Masters of Horror. Yeah, yeah. But I have, to, I have to just take a moment to Go express ahead. my appreciation for this. Breathe it all <laughs> To be part of television Life. history. It is. You know, I mean, uh, all this in Assignment Terror too. Yeah. Which, by, yeah. The, which, which yeah. by the way, your print doesn't say yeah. Assignment Terror. It says Reincarnator. Yeah. Which well, is one of its many uh, incarnations. Yeah. You told me yeah. that... Uh, I don't think Michael Rennie did this right after uh, Pedro stood still. I think it was a number of years. Yeah, right well, I don't think he'll be remembered for this one. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 it's, uh, it, it's not that bad a movie. Yeah. And it's, it's an, actually an Italian movie. But it's it's actually a little better than a few of the Corman films. It's, and also, you're running at Letterbox, which I was yeah. very impressed. The DGA will hear of this. It's yeah. very, very impressive. Don't you hate people to watch Letterbox and they're like, there's something wrong with my TV. There's black to tell Yeah, why come we can't see uh, their feet? You know. Wow. Yeah. Um, anyway, um, I'm here. here. You're here. I'm here to plug because uh, that's what people call me shows for. Uh, it, I'm here to plug my latest thing, which yeah. is a series called Ma uh, Masters of Horror, which I did an episode of. And it's going to be on Showtime. It uh, starts uh, November 28th. There's 13 episodes, all directed by uh, horror movie directors. Mm -hmm. And uh, the, uh, the appeal here, obviously, it's Showtime, so there wasn't a lot of money. But the appeal is that uh, everybody got to do exactly what they wanted without any interference. There were no notes. There was no creative, you know, helping mm -hmm. by, the, by people who say, you know, if you got guy had a, had a dog, it'd be a better show. Um, and so all of these different episodes are um, uh, pretty much right out of the heads of the, the people who made them. And uh, I've seen a number of them, and they're, uh, they're, they're pretty darn good. Are the episodes all different? They're all different. They're all different stories. Uh, and uh, Stuart Gordon did an H.P. Lovecraft, and uh, John Carpenter did an original, uh, and Toby Hooper, and uh, oh. Larry Cullen, and... Um, it's it's a really a, a good group of people, and um, I think it's going to be uh, pretty hot in the horror community. When does it start? Twenty eighth. Twenty eighth, and basically uh, your episode is about what? Well, mine runs on December second, and uh, mine is about uh, dead Iraqi uh, veterans of the Iraq War who mm. come back from the grave to vote oh, out the people. Wow. Very timely. Um, yeah. and it's sort of um, a little political. Uh, were you worried about that? No, I, I, it's, it's really was done to, uh, because there's a vacuum. I mean, nobody's treating any of these uh, things that are going on in the world dramatically. Everybody's afraid of it. So this, this seemed to be the perfect venue for it. It's, it's like... An outlet for you. Yeah, and I, you know, horror movies have always been subversive. Horror movies and comedies. I mean, if you ever want to really see what's going on at any time in, in the mm -hmm. country's history, you just look at a horror movie or a comedy that was made around that time, and that's where all the messages, all the coded messages are about what was really going on. Is there any humor in this episode? Because even though it's a kind of iffy subject... It's, uh, it's a little hard for me to not yeah. do some kind of black humor. Yeah, because you're that. Joe Dante. Yeah, it's, uh, it, just, it sort of oozes out. So. Yeah. <laughs> so what does it feel like to be called a celebrity director? Because celebrity directors in, in the horror genre is very prevalent. Uh, Toby Hooper, George Romero. Well, the nice thing about being a, a minor celebrity, which is what all of us horror movie people minor are. Minor celebrity. That's true. Yeah. It's true. It, because certain Joe people Dante. know who you are. It's, it's much better than being a big celebrity. Yeah. Because big celebrities, you know, you're in People Magazine and people want to know about your sex life and, you know, whether you eat dog poop. And, you know, <laughs> nobody cares about, nobody cares about what, nobody cares about what the, these directors do except the people who know who they are, yeah. who are, tend to be film fans. Yeah. And so it's not a, about your life, it's not about your gossip, it's not about who you married or who you date, it's about your work. Yeah. So it's, it's exactly the level of celebrity that I think most of us are comfortable with. Now, Masters of Horror, a lot of directors don't like to do TV, but you don't mind that? Well, you know, there's not that much difference anymore between TV and features. Yeah. So in fact, content-wise, there's more content on television than there is in features. Features are all, features have become giant, expensive B pictures. Uh, they're all, it's all action, it's all spectacle. There are very few movies with, quote, content, whereas television, uh, you know, the best series on TV are all about things that happen, you know, in your real life, and, and plus they have the virtue of being made quickly, mm -hmm. so they can be topical. Movies can't be topical. It takes almost a year to get from, a, a, you know, writing a movie to getting it out in the theaters, and anything can happen between them. So does that mean you would be, you would do TV? You'd be I've done TV. I've done a lot of TV. I did Erie, Indiana, which I thought was a lot of fun. Uh, I've done a lot of TV movies. I did a picture called The Second Civil War, which just came out on... DVD a couple of weeks ago and uh, is very hard to find, but is worth it. 
um, and uh, I've done some stuff for Showtime, and I've done series. Uh, it, it, it's, it's become much easier to bounce back and forth from movies to TV. And the man that brought back the Looney Tunes characters, Looney Tunes back in action. Yeah, well... That I, had to be fun. No. No? I not think it was fun. <laughs> okay, what wasn't fun? It wasn't fun. Give us well, all the dirt, Joe. Th it's not dirt, it's just that, the, you know, the, the picture was made by uh, a studio that really wasn't, didn't want to make the movie. The yeah. marketing people wanted to make the movie because the characters, you know, are very valuable. But the people who ran the studio at the time were not cartoon fans, and they really yeah. didn't care much about Bugs Bunny or know him from Woody Woodpecker, you know? So it, it just became very difficult to, to maintain the... Chuck Jones, Frizz Freeling, Bob Clampett quality of, you know, the, the Looney Tunes that we grew up with, because mm -hmm. there's tremendous pressure to change them and modernize them, quote unquote. And, yeah. and you may remember that debacle uh, a couple of months ago about uh, changing the characters, redesigning them, and calling them Buzz Bunny and yeah. and uh, all that stuff. I mean, uh, it, it's their their complaint is these cartoons are old fashioned. They were made, you know, during the war and in the 50s, and you know they are 50 years old these cartoons, but they're better in a lot of ways, and hipper than a lot of the stuff that's being made now. So, Joe, are you approached by people to do these projects, or can you choose them yourself and say, I would like to do this? Project? Well, all directors have the pictures they want to make, and then they have the pictures that people offer them. And sometimes they coalesce, and you, you, you find something that somebody offers you that you like. Uh, but my theory has always been, don't accept anything you wouldn't pay to see. Yeah. That if you direct a movie that is a type of picture that you don't like, then, you know, somebody else should be doing it. Do you feel an obligation to do cult films because Wes Craven has done stream, you know, mainstream films and not necessarily all cult films? What about you? Do you feel you Well, have I don't to? think any, any director feels an obligation to make cult films. And, and many times directors don't know they're making cult films <laughs> until they don't <laughs> they make any money cult when cult they come out. <laughs> and then 10 years later, somebody says, oh, that was a good picture. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's, no, it's, it's, there's a certain amount of typecasting. I mean, yeah. you get, if you do nothing but horror pictures, then it's going to be hard to get a, a drama. And Wes has been lucky to escape that. He's, he's, he can travel back and forth. Yeah. In Looney Tunes Back in Action, you got to have a lot of your friends there. Roger Corman, who once gave you a job, and then you turned around and gave him a job. Well, I, I've had Roger in a couple of my movies. Uh, it, it, I find that if you... I, it, it, like John Ford had a stock company, and Mark Bergman had a stock company. All directors have stock companies. If you look at all the work that they've done down the line, you always see the same faces appearing before mm -hmm. and behind the camera. And Roger uh, was a, gave me my start at a time when um, you know no one else would. And he, he was hiring people who didn't know what they were doing and paying them nothing. And that's what we uh, yeah basically we gave him that back. Is it true if they say that Roger Corman was very cheap when he was making his films? I never heard that. They never heard that. <laughs> <laughs> you always got paid and everything, right? Well, one thing Roger doesn't pay much, but he pays. He pays. Yeah. And and actually, it's part of his legend is that even though. The, there's not much money. Yeah. It's it's there. He always. It, it's not like some guys who just sort of depart with the money. What do you think about the Howling? Perhaps the greatest werewolf movie ever made, and you directed that. Well, that was a long time ago. <laughs> what do you think of it? What do I think about it? You know, it's. Uh, yeah. I I was. Uh, it was my third movie. I mean, I I really, uh, I I sort of didn't know what I was doing, and you know, you pick up a little bit each picture, and and uh, that was one of the ones that turned out really well. well no.